Yeah, a lot of people think that uh, you know mindfulness is such a popular word these days, and uh, they think if you're mindful in your present moment, then that's that's equal to enlightenment. You know, be here now. Uh, this idea, be here now, and you're enlightened. Well, the, I don't think the Buddha really saw it that way. And mindfulness, you know, the Buddha even you know gave a <clears throat> the Dhammapada verse, mindfulness is the path to the deathless. So we practice mindfulness is one of the key factors in mental training in which we develop. The practice of mindfulness allows you not to get stuck and cling to the present moment of uh, material stimulus or the present moment of consciousness as, as it's coming and going. But you have to, mindfulness has to be uh, accompanied by clear comprehension and, and wisdom. Uh, and if there's no wisdom, the wisdom is knowing that whatever you're experiencing in the present moment, whether it's form, feeling, perception, or volition, or even consciousness itself, is impermanent. And if you cling to that, you know, suffering arises. And uh, it's without any inherent indwelling control or, or owner. So by practicing mindfulness, we're able to uh, let go of the tendency for clinging, the tendency for delusion, and when we introduce the, the wisdom, the wisdom allows us to let go of the particular stimulus so that we can uh, allow the consciousness and awareness to keep on penetrating and going to subtler and subtler levels of uh, experience. And once the mind is uh, able to let go of even the identification to I, me, and mine, and even the identification to consciousness itself, even the identification to awareness, that in the end it's able to transcend all that uh, subject-object uh, duality, and even the thought that I am consciousness or I am awareness, that has to be transcended uh, uh, also, or totally, in order for the real experience of liberation.